Hi everyone, welcome to episode 94 of Wool and Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. This show today is brought to you by our Patreon support and I am streaming it with my Patreon members in the chat channel here on YouTube and we do this twice a month and then it's released out afterwards. So thank you to those who are watching and, and interacting now in the in the chat. I really appreciate you guys being here and um, I want to welcome anybody else who's watching the show to this place and I hope that you enjoy the show. Um, this is mostly a hand spinning podcast, which many of you know, and today I have sort of a variety of things to share with you. Um, we have some, um, I, I really have one big project that I want to talk about and it encompasses spinning. Um, there was some crochet involved and there was also a ton of knitting. Um, so I hope that you, um, you know, don't mind that I'm only talking about one project today. Um, it's been a 16 months in the making. I actually calculated it yesterday because I was like, how long did this really take me? And that was how long? It was 16 months. Um, I have a couple other things to touch on that are sitting here in my uh, second camera view here and I'll talk about those very briefly. And, uh, and then we'll get more into some more detail about the uh, cowl here next show when I have a chance to talk about it because I really wanted to focus on the on my other project today. Um, we had a couple of giveaways from last show that I didn't actually award because things were just so crazy around here and we had a bunch of stuff uh, going on. That was episode 93. Um, so we have the patron calendar giveaway every month and this is for our Patreon subscribers. This is April. And the calendar that I'm giving away right now starts in July. Um, so it'll go July till June of 2019. And then once we hit July, then um, the next set of calendars will go from January of 2019 all the way to December of 2019. So um, I sort of changed the start months based on how, um, so that when you get your calendar, you can start using it relatively soon. Um, and so it's actually already gone out in the mail, even though um, I haven't, announced here who won. Um, our winner for the calendar was Carly. Um, so Carly Jean and I sent that into the mail for her right away because I contacted her right away and I wanted to get that mailed off. So she won that and then um, the other giveaway that we had from February, no sorry from March, I keep thinking we're in March, can you believe it? I th I've written March on like four or five different things. March 2018. <laughs> I'm like wait a second it's April and we're almost done April. Anyways, for our um, March giveaway, we were um, giving this uh, beautiful uh, pin drafted roving superwash BFL from uh, Smith & U, which is located here in British Columbia in a place called Kamloops, um, which actually we lived in for a while. Um, and this is actually going to Wilma. She um, always happy feet on Ravelry. And she's a Canadian as well. She lives in Spain part of the year, so we've been, um, that'll go in the mail later today. Um, there is supposed to be a giveaway for April and just with everything that's been going on and like I said, pop back to episode 93 to um, so you can learn a bit more about what's been going on. Um, the I haven't done a giveaway for April so what I thought I would do instead of scrambling to try to come up with something today and then announcing the winner and giving it away next episode, I thought what we would do for May is I almost said March. Oh my gosh, I've got March in my brain. I thought that what we could do is um, do two two giveaways in May. So uh, next show, the beginning of May, I usually announce a giveaway. We give it all month, and then the next month, the first show, um, I do the. I, I give it away and then I announce the winner and then I do another giveaway. So I think what we'll do for May is we'll do two giveaways and then we'll have two winners come June. So that's how I'm going to kind of bridge that gap a little bit because um, this month's just been too hard. about these projects and I want to talk really quickly about what's in the background here because it's not hand spun and it's not spinning related but it is knitting related and I wanted to talk about it really quickly because um, there's a couple of things about it that I want to um, 
I want to talk about is like a sweater knit because there's a lot of people in our community who are sweater knitters and then I'm going to um, rip part of it out so I wanted to talk about it first before I did that because I thought it would be kind of neat to show you what it looks like now and then what it'll look like when I fix it quote unquote um, so let's get in quickly this was a spin I'll just move this out of the way um, this was a spin that I had done a while ago it was um, a sock fiber so it was um, merino alpaca I didn't write it down of course merino alpaca nylon and silk I think and it, I dyed it myself I bought it as a plain white um, uh, fiber and I dyed it and then I just kettle dyed it on the on the stove and I added a whole bunch of different colors and in different spots different colors picked up and then I spun it as a three ply I was going to originally spin it as a I was going to spin the singles and then I was going to three ply it and I was going to do socks with it but as I was spinning I really fell in love with all the colors and all the barber polling and what it looked like and I've talked about this on the show before um, and so in the end I ended up two plying it and I did this on my e-spinner, on my um, my Ashford e-spinner 3. It was the maiden spin on it. And actually, funnily enough, I haven't thrown anything else on it since I finished this. And it's just because of everything that's been going on. So um, what I wanted to share, though, was, because you guys have seen this before and I talked about it before, was how much it puffed up um, because I finally washed it. So we've got absolutely gorgeous weather here right now. I, I live just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada. We have had such a long winter. It's just been horribly cold, um, a lot of wind, a lot of rain. Um, and usually in February and March, we get a couple of days or usually like a week where it'll lighten up a little bit and we'll get some nicer weather, but we just didn't get that this year. And um, the kids have been going really squirrely in school and lots of, um, lots of issues with the boys at school and being really cooped up and everything, which I totally get. Like that's not just our, our classroom or our kids it's like going on everywhere so finally this week on the weekend it just totally brightened up and we got some really beautiful weather and um, the um, yesterday I thought you know what I'm gonna get this yarn washed because I had some other stuff to wash as well um, which I don't have right here but it was some old stuff that I wanted to kind of get some new life into and get it washed and everything and um, I washed it and I hung it outside to dry because right at our front door I have like a, a hook in the eaves and it's a perfect place to hang a hanging basket. But what I often do is I'll take the hanging basket down and I'll hook a uh, clothes, um, just a clothes hanger with the yarn around it and I let it just blow around in the breeze out there. So it dried within like two or three hours. Um, but it's just really puffed up and come up to life and that took um, the because it was very compacted and it wasn't it didn't have a lot of life to it after I had washed after I'd taken it off the wheel it just didn't seem like it had a lot of um, um, it, it was seemed very flat and so I wanted to show you like when you wash things they really puff up and they really um, take on a new life of their own and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this yarn I have over a thousand yards um, my original plan was to knit a hap out of it but I also have my Romney um, mohair spin that I did and I have about 1400 yards of that as well so I've got these two like gigantic spins and I don't really want to knit two haps so I'm thinking this might become the quill shawl that was a Brooklyn tweed pattern a few years ago and the other may actually become a sweater knit um, I've been thinking about that over the last couple weeks and I've actually been picking Katrina's brain um, crafty jacks on uh, Slack and Instagram and Ravelry and stuff so many of you know who she is and uh, I've been talking to Katrina about maybe um, doing a, a sweater dyeing that that other yarn and doing a sweater a sweater knit instead because I um, I really love both yarns but I don't know that I want two big thousand yard haps I don't know if I want to do all that knitting either and then there was a sweater pattern I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent but there was a sweater pattern that was just released and I'll look it up here for you guys now and it was um, Hohi Locatelli it's a Hohi Locatelli pattern and um, it's done in Sweet Georgia Cash Lux I think something like that and she um, 
It's called the Sparkle Cardigan because the Cash Lux is, um, it has a sparkle to it. And I was thinking about maybe do it using this for my um, Romney Merino. See if we can get this to focus. But isn't that pretty? It's got all that lace work on it. It goes up the back as well. Um, it's a little bit fancier. It's got that lovely V-neck. Um, it's not super long, so like you could wear it over a little summer tank top or and some nice jeans or a skirt or something like how ho he's uh, wearing it here. Um, I just think it's a really pretty cardigan. I'm not sure I would dye the yarn that color because I already have a couple of sweaters that are that mauve purple color. But I thought that this was really, really pretty. Um, and I'm sure many of you have seen this on Ravelry because it was literally just released. So yeah, so I'm thinking maybe about using that. Uh, the Romney Merino, the Romney Merino, the Romney Mohair yarn for that because my the yardage this called for for my size, um, I would actually have enough. So, and I could probably shorten the sleeves a little bit if I if I was a little bit short. So that is that spin done. Um, the other thing I want to talk about really briefly before we talk about the pop blanket is my escarpment cowl. So this was a uh, one of those knit alongs that started in the Ravelry group, um, kind of out of the blue. Um, Becca, who is Bethy40, um, she had started knitting one out of a gradient that she had spun that was Katrina's, I think it was Katrina's Targi. Can you just double, tell me if I'm right about that, um, Becca? And I saw it and I thought, huh, that would be perfect for that ancient arts yarn that I have. And um, it's a gradient. Um, I spun it accidentally as a gradient. I'm not actually sure it was meant to be spun as a gradient. Um, I'm not, I think it was actually meant to be like stripped down and then all jumbled up together. But I didn't know any better when I was first coming back to spinning and I'd never worked with these hand painted braids before. And um, I ended up sort of just stripping it lengthwise and I spun each end and I still had my Kromsky minstrel at the time actually and I just spun it end to end and I applied it and I sort of accidentally ended up with this gradient I had no idea that that was how it was going to spin and of course in hindsight I was like how could I not have t known that as I spun through the red I was going to spin through the green and the purple and like that's how it would end up but anyways this is this she sells seashells um colorway which is also one of their yarns and um, I'm just really, really happy with how this turned out. I'll talk about it a little bit more next show and I'll actually put it on and I'll show you about the fit and everything. But it is done, it is blocked. It dried within a couple of hours. I love the softness of the colors. They actually remind me a lot of natural dyes. It's not natural dyes, but they remind me of natural dyes. And um, I'm just really, really happy with how this turned out. I had 450 430 yards and I pretty much knit to the end. Um, I have a little skein left over that I thought I would show you guys when I talk about this a little bit more but I just kept knitting. I ignored the pattern in terms of how long to make it and um, I'm glad I did because I really like the size of it. So the only change that I would make is I would make the neck opening a little bit smaller. So I think she tells you can't remember what the distance is but it's part of the pattern and it is a paid for pattern so I don't want to give too much of the secret sauce away but she tells you to attach it at a certain length and I would probably do that two to three inches before um, because I find the neck is a little bit too open for what I like. Um, but it looks great with my green vest that I wear all the time. It looks great with my black one that I wear all the time and it's just a really, it turned out really, really well compared to, um, um, I, I kind of went into it with the attitude of, well, we'll see how this goes. But I'm really glad to have finally been able to do something with this yarn because this yarn's been sitting in my stash and I've knit with it quite a few times. And nothing has really ever worked out. Nothing's ever been like, yes, that's what that yarn is meant to be. And I think to finally have something that I'm really happy with, um, I'm really pleased about. The only regret that I have is that I started at the red end and I knit to the green end and I wish I had done the opposite. So I wish the green was up here and the red was down here only because having that red right up against my face, it's not the best. It's fine. I can wear this color red, but it's not my favorite and I wish the green was first, but that's okay. It's definitely not a big deal and the size is perfect. So 
Yeah. So anyways, I'll talk about this a little bit more next time and um, I'll put it on and I'll model it and I'll show you guys a little bit more and I've got some photos of it finished and I'll um, share that all with you as well. I'm going to switch the cameras around a little bit so that I can get rid of this little um, this little box down here, I guess, and um, I can talk about my um, dress form in the background. So um, I'm going to move over a little bit. And I'm going to pull my dress form forward. So I'm just going to move things around just a, a tiny bit. If anybody is ever on the fence about buying a dress form for knitting sweaters, save your pennies and get one. They make a huge difference. Um, whenever people ask me what my most used knitting tool is, I always say my dress form only because I'm a sweater knitter. If I wasn't a sweater knitter, I don't think I would be advocating getting a dress form. But my dress form, I made I made the sizing of it because they're adjustable all underneath, right? So all of this is all adjustable all under here. And I have a D Diana doll, which in Canada, is they're sold at um, Fabricland. And um, I, sorry, this is so dark. Um, I bought mine, It they go on sale quite often, and I bought mine so that I could go up two or three sizes and that meant that I measured myself when I had all of my clothing on so like my t-shirt my bra jeans I measured all of that and then I set her sizing to that size because sweaters are always usually not always but most of the time are worn over top of all of our clothing and everything and I think that's partly why I've been able to get such great fits um, with my stuff is because um, I, I added that ease into her when I sized her and when I adjusted everything on her. Um, so I'm sorry this is so dark. I hope you can still see. Um, part of the problem is this monitor where it's showing me um, her is very dark. So I hope that on the on YouTube that it's not too, too bad. But it is pretty dark. So um, I think what I might do, if you guys are okay with the hanging on two seconds, I'm going to move one of my cameras. Or cameras one of my lights and it'll light the front of it and it'll kind of make it look like it's front lit and that might help you guys with being able to see it how's that is that any better I hope so now I'm like super lit but that's okay because um, this is about you guys so this is the South Bay sweater and um, it, it turned out I re I'm really happy with it um, I really like um, the the shaping of it there there's really not a whole lot of shaping um, it's it's very um, it's just got a lovely shape and design to it it's kind of interesting because a lot of people have said that they find like that it's quite an interesting sweater and that they're not um, you know that that it's sort of a little bit different but I actually thought that it was pretty like it's just a sweater tunic um, it's a little bit longer it's got the gathering in here so you increase out um, you know, it's not, um, it's just a raglan, you knit it top down, it's got this big cowl on it. It's nothing sort of out of the ordinary in terms of, um, I'm going to turn the camera a little bit, um, in terms of like sort of anything overly kind of out of the blue. The back of it is very plain. There's nothing really to see back there. Hopefully you guys can see that clearly. It is a very dark sweater, like it's it's a dark wine purple. Um, and then it's got the three-quarter sleeves, and I have to say the three-quarter sleeves are absolutely perfect for my um, height and for what I would want in a three-quarter sleeve. Like it's very, it's kind of just the perfect length. Like often I find three-quarter sleeves end like more up here, and they're kind of more like, like on me, they kind of come to here right at or or above my elbow whereas these come down to right below the muscle that's right here they, it comes right to here which is perfect because I won't be pulling at it or trying to like adjust it all the time um, and then down here is just the garter stitch and you build the neck down and then you eventually attach and work in the round all the way around and you're you know zinging around there's a lot of knitting in this sweater in some ways and then in other ways there's actually not a lot of knitting um, I was sort of surprised at how much how quickly it went once I really got going on it. The only thing, and I've already lengthened it, you knit to a certain length here, and this is a paid for pattern, so I'm not gonna give away all of the information as well. Um, the, because I wanna value Samantha's work. This is designed by Samantha Lamb, and she lives in um, Toronto. 
she's a fellow Canadian. And uh, so you knit down, so this is a certain length from here to here, and then you do your gather stitches, and then you work in stockinette down. And there are some increases along the side to create this really nice A-line. Um, however, this is always an issue for me. So from my underarm to my waist, there I'm nine inches, and most people are between three and five inches. So I think most patterns say knit four inches straight and then increase for the hips. I usually need to add nine inches in here. So from here to here, um, I usually need to add nine inches, which is a lot, like that's a lot of distance down to there. Um, so on my dress form, it's down to here before I before I hit my natural waist. Um, and then I'm long torsoed again from my waist down to the top part of my hips. So I had added two inches in here. So from the skirt, from the top of the skirt to the bottom of the skirt is, um, and I'll just move this back a bit so you can see, because you don't really need to see the details of the sweater anymore. From here to here, um, I can't remember what the length is, but I added two inches already. So this um, ribbing down here is the same length as the ribbing at the end, or sorry, as the garter at the end of the sleeves. And I already added two inches in here before I started the ribbing. So like if I hadn't have done that, it would have been up here. So you can see that's a pretty big difference in length, right? So I added those two inches and then I did the bottom stuff. And I, I didn't try it on, but I did throw it on Susie on my, on, on my dress form. And that's what I call her. And um, it's still not long enough. It's still two inches too short. So I needed to add four inches, not two. So I'm gonna undo all of this garter down here and I need to go back and I, there's one last increase that was right here, right above the garter, and it actually makes the hem at the bottom around my hips, it actually makes it a bit too loose, so it almost looks like it's flared out from my body, if you know, if, if that makes any sense, and I've got pretty big hips, like my hips are, at the fullest point, my hips are 42 inches around, like I'm not, I'm not slim through my hips. Um, but that extra increase was too much. So I need to in add these two inches so that the um, so that where this ends, there's actually two more inches down to about here. And I also need to take out that last increase. So I'll report back um, and I will let you guys know. I posted up on Instagram before I added the cowl neck and I'll move this back so you guys can see. I sort of put like a mini poll on Instagram and was like, you know, should I do the cowl neck or not? I wasn't sure what I should do. I really wanted to knit it for the cowl neck. That was the original thing that actually really like attracted me to the sweater. And then in the end, uh, it was actually my sister-in-law that said, yeah, I think you should. Like, I think the cowl neck would really make it. Um, cause there is a, an option in the pattern to just do a, a, a traditional collar, like, like you would get sort of on a t-shirt that's like that. Um, but I think the magic of this is that it's a standalone sweater. You don't need to wear a scarf over top. You don't need to wear anything. I would love to be able to wear this with my green vest in the winter. Um, so having this means I don't have to put a shawl on or a cowl or anything over top. Um, and I can just wear it as is um, with my with my vest. So I just need to add that length and, um, and get that all fixed up and then hopefully um, it'll be wearable. Sorry for coming up really close to you guys. I'm going to move my, my light back. Because to be honest with you, they're really hot. <laughs> the lights are hot. So I'm just going to look in the chat channel really quick because I've been babbling away at you guys and I haven't looked. Um, Rebecca says the garter panel in the front plus the blousing does seem unusual to me but plus the cowl neck but it really works you rock it thank you Rebecca I appreciate that it's funny because Samantha Lamb so she designs under Sam Lamb um, she I'm gonna show you a picture of of her if you guys don't mind waiting for just a sec I love her style like if I could emanate and wear what she wears I know that sounds a bit crazy I don't usually say stuff like that but I just really love her look if you will um, and she dresses, of course, for the Canadian winter, and we don't get that real cold Canadian winter, although it is changing. Um, I just really loved the look of it on her. So I'm going to bring this up close to the camera, and hopefully you guys will be able to see. Uh, 
um, it just has that a lovely look about it, you know, with that cowl neck and um, mine, of course, needs to be a little bit longer. She's very petite, Samantha. And it's just got a really lovely look to it, I think. Um, and she, oh, and here's this the standard, like the sort of what I would call like a more traditional neck. Um, and I really like it as well. I think it's got a lovely, there we go. I think it's got a lovely look to it as well. Um, it almost kind of looks like the garter section is a little bit shorter in this photo compared to the purple sweater, the first one that I showed you by her. But I do really like it still. Um, I think they both have just a lovely design element to them. So that is the South Bay sweater and I am going to um, um, fix it and then I'll report back and let you know how that went. So next I'm gonna move my cameras around and we're gonna talk about the pop blanket. Um, this video runs about five minutes and I'll hopefully hopefully it'll all work and I'll be talking in the corner if I lose you for a minute just bear with me and I'll see if I can get stuff fixed and if not then we'll I'll just we'll just have to talk through it and I'll have to um, add the video um, when I upload the video later so um, let me just get this all working here That's a good point actually Rebecca going back for a minute to the South Bay sweater just behind me here she says it's graphic but in texture rather than color and I think that's why it works because the one that she the two that she knit the purple the, the purple one and then the kind of pinky one with the more traditional neckline they're very neutral and very quiet in coloring and I think that really makes a big difference with these sweaters like if you really make these really graphic busy sweaters there's just too much going on. Like the, a, a pattern like this, I don't personally think would work in any kind of a speckled dye. I'm not even sure a tonal yarn would really work that well. It's just too much going on and there's too much competition. However, on the right person, knit the right way with the right yarn, it, it might work. Um, I think you'd have to go with a semi-solid tonal for it to work. Like, you know, or one that shifts between really soft blues or one that shifts between like browns or purples that is a bit softer and not quite so, boom, I'm a tonal. Because um, some of them are much more contrasty than others. Um, I know that's not really a word, but you know what I mean? So I think it's definitely something to think about with some of these sweaters where they, there's a lot of design elements going on. There's the A-line, the garter panel, the cowl neck, the garter on the cuffs. It's a three-quarter sleeve, so you've got to be aware of what you put on your wrist. And then you've got the garter at the bottom. Does that make sense? So, all right, let's see if I can get this to work, and we will. I will see you on the other side. Fingers crossed, because I'm just hoping that it all works. Oh, well, there I am, so that's good. We've got one thing is working. And I don't want to lose my pop channel, so I'm just going to... I use the pop-out um, chat. I don't know if any of you use that. There is an option on the side of the chat channel to pop it out if you're on a desktop. And uh, so this is the pop blanket. You guys will know what it is and what it looks like once you see the finished object. So this took me 16 months to make. Um, all these little squares I knit in my hand spun the centers and then I used um, various colors of white and cream out of my stash to uh, do the outsides. And then I started stacking them up to keep them organized to sort of keep the colors relatively separate or as separate as we could. And then eventually I actually laid them out to try to figure out where they were all gonna go. And I was blocking some of them as I went. That was my number one thing was I wish I had blocked as I went. So in terms of sewing them all together, some of the blocks weren't um, blocked. Um, like I, I just knit them, threw them into the pile and moved on. But my biggest regret, I would do it differently next time is probably the best, um, the best way of saying that. I would not wait until the end to block stuff. I would block them as I went. And that was a tip that I got from my friend Chrissy over at Snappy Stitches or Manic Pearl. She blocked hers as she went and I got really lazy halfway through and I didn't keep blocking. Big mistake because as you can see with some of these here in the corner, there's a bunch of them that they were curling really badly as I was trying to sew them together. And you can see, uh, if I just go back a little bit, you can see here like laying out there was a whole bunch of them up at the top there and in the middle. They're all curled around and it was just a nightmare to try to get them to lay flat um, and to seam them up 
properly. The other mistake that I made, or not, I don't want to call them mistakes, but the other big regret that I have is I didn't weave in the ends as I went. If you're going to make this project, weave in the ends as you go. I got really lazy after the first couple and I didn't weave in the ends. Big mistake. Um, because at the end I had all of these blocks and I had I had 14 by 4, so what is that 14 times 4? How, how many blocks is that? Somebody will throw in the number. Um, and none of them had the ends woven in. So I didn't have ends woven in and I didn't have the corners finished. That was a, that was a big mistake. Um, I should have, I should have done that. So blocking them as you go and weaving in the ends, two major things that you, you just, you got to do. Um, it was too, good word, Kelly, it was just too onerous to weave them in all at the end. Um, and then it's crocheted together. So the pot blanket is actually seamed by crocheting them all together. And I think if I were to do it again, I would actually start seaming some of these up ahead of time. So if you know that you have two that you're going to put together for sure, I would sew them together right away. And then you can have your big long, your big long um, lines. So you can see there in the hanging, there's the four rows, uh, 56, thank you Elizabeth. Um, so there are 56 blocks in total. And what I would do if I were to do this again, which I'm not, I'm never knitting this again, um, is to have um, all of the blocks that are, that basically the seams that are running um, vertical, I would do those also. If you know that like that orange and yellow block are definitely gonna go beside each other no matter what, I would seam those together. And if you know that you're gonna have a red one that goes next to a yellow one, yes, I would definitely seam those together. Um, and then in the end, you would have your, your rows all seamed together. And then all you have to do is your long horizontal rows because it just otherwise, what ended up happening was your, I worked my way across to seam all of my vertical ones, did that four times, and then I couldn't remember which end was went at which end and which end was supposed to go which way. So this is it hanging on the wall now, and we've decided to put it in our living room. The original plan was that this was going to go above our uh, bed. We have a king size bed, and it was the, the original plan. We have nothing above it right now. The original plan was it was going to go up above. But our house has become very echoey um, because we had to, one of our area rugs got wrecked and so we don't have anything on the floors right now. And um, it's just nice to get some textiles up on the wall and this particular wall above one of our couches, it's a three seater couch, um, is not, um, there's nothing above there right now. And what I did have up there a while ago, um, I ended up taking down because it was too small. And this just fits perfectly because you can see um, that it just fits that whole space and fills up that whole wall just perfect. Um, and so I ended up, we left it that way. So you can see the piano is on the other wall and that's our dining room down there. And then that door that you see goes into our kitchen. Um, and on the opposite of this wall is our TV, um, which we um, have been talking about getting rid of and putting away for a while. So um, that's sort of the opposite wall at this point, but that might change. Um, and then you can see how I, I just um, tacked it onto the, onto the branch. So every, um, every block sort of has a, a double tack. So I went through the blanket twice around the branch and then I adjusted the lengths um, to try to get it to hang relatively straight so that the whole thing would be um, relatively sort of, and I'm still figuring that out. Every every time I walk past it, I adjust it a little bit because I'm not totally sure. Like right now, the way I've got it, the one side is sloped a little bit. It's just the way that the branch is. So I might lift that up when I walk through to this afternoon. <laughs> so I think what I wanted to say about this piece is like, it's a real statement piece. I've never made anything like this before. If you've been with me since the beginning on the podcast, this is totally out of my wheelhouse. This is not something that I normally make. Um, oh, and that's it 
on the wall. So we used a plug, a wall plug with a screw because we, to get it centered on the wall, we couldn't uh, put it into a stud, um, like a wall stud. And it, it's quite heavy. I haven't weighed it, but it's definitely a couple of pounds. And the branch itself is quite long. It's about 70 or 80 inches long. And it's a solid piece of wood. I did dry it out as much as I could before I brought it into the house. Um, but it's pretty dense. It's pretty solid. So um, Mike said he thought that it was best if we used a wall plug and a screw and actually because it's a piece of twine The twines over there, so it's not close It's the same stuff that I used for my branch that I hang my yarn on which I've talked about in previous shows um, It really gives it a nice strong sturdy thing to hang from and then I can just sort of adjust it and adjust the branch um, as I go so these are all the individual blocks and you can see like there's a lot of variety, but the overall palette is very similar. Like they're, they're not, they don't differentiate that much. I, I had neon orange ones. I took those all out. So in the end, the neon orange, I think it was August 2016 club. It ended up not being included. So I have a couple of them knit up, but Nora just uses them as baby blankets because um, they're just so bright and they just completely stole all of the, um, subtleties of the other yarns where the red worked the orange didn't and I think the red works because it could be flanked by that orangey yellow that was the yarn called Sailor's Delight I think it was from January of 2017 and it could also go next to the yellow which tends to steal the spotlight so and then if I'll just pause it here oh yeah really quick do you see that little block that's in the upper left it's in your upper left hand corner and it's the second one down right against the edge of the screen over here. Um, it's on this side and it's the second one down. You see how it's quite a bit smaller in circle? I tried um, a couple where I knew I didn't have enough yarn to knit the whole big circle, but I really wanted to include that yarn. So that yarn is actually, you might remember, um, I tried a combo with some Ancient Arts yarns where I carded up some purple and then I tried to um, combo draft it with some lighter colored ancient arts because I wanted to combine the two and use them together that was the sample and that's all I had and I decided in the end to still include it because the colors were so pretty and they worked next to that purple one that's next to it and then the yellow and they're all compliments and I just thought well it doesn't it's different than the others but unless you actually know to look for it it's kind of like an anomaly almost it's like you know, one of these is not the same, but you'd have to really study it to kind of pick up on that. And I, I like stuff like that. I like when there's one thing kind of out of sync with everything else. Now the fringe, oh, let's talk about the yarn first. This was the Woolly Witch. Um, this was one of her uh, clubs. That was a gift. This is some Romney that I uh, carded up and it was naturally dyed. This was um, Sailor's Delight. It was um, woolen spinning uh, club. This was some punies that I carded up. There's some yak catmull in there, some yellow merino. This was the combo yarn, the combo spin that I did. I'm going to cough. <coughs> this was the hello yarn combo spin that I did. <coughs> and I, I had done the bats, do you remember? And then I combo spun it with the um, hello yarn um, um, comb top. I'll answer your question in just a sec, Rebecca. I see, I see that question that you just asked. Um, this was more woolen spinning fiber club when we still had it. I think it was August or something. This was my absolute most favorite um, um, woolen spinning club. I think it was October. This was in um, December of 2016. It was a luxury one with Tessa Silk. This was some punies that I had done up in purples. This was the very first Nora's sweater purple, I think it was called. It was the very first woolen spinning club. Um, yeah, so they all, like there's a lot of history there, Rebecca, you're totally right. Um, one of the things that Rebecca said was, um, it's not all the same white question mark, you can never tell. Yeah, so there's three different colors of white and cream in there. There's um, Katrina's uh, Delicious DK in natural BFL in there. There's um, um, Bur um, Barocco uh, Ultra, no, Barocco uh, Vintage in plain white. And there's an unnamed, because I don't have the yarn label anymore, I have no idea what it was. I think it might have been Cascade 220, and it was a cream. So the BFL uh, that is that was the Delicious DK, it's 
got a slightly it's called natural it's like a it's got a bit of a cream t tone to it um very much um Gave, gives it a bit of a warmer feel and then the white ones you can actually see which ones are white like if I was able to point up you could actually when you really study it you can see I can tell which ones are white and which ones are cream but it was an awesome stash buster and I used up two partial skeins of yarn just doing the fringe so there's a part of me that wants to take it down and use my rotary cutter and trim off the fringe so it's exactly all level and perfect but the problem is is that the bottom of the um, wall hanging isn't completely straight so if I do that some of the fringe will be shorter and some will be longer and yeah it'll be level on the bottom but um, it, if if anything ever happened and I had to like reblock it or whatever it would all be different so I kind of like the fringy unevenness of it I like that it balances the um, imperfection of the branch and I kind of like that it's different like that it's not perfect and that it's not absolutely perfectly like it's not a it's not a, a super finely woven um, scarf or shawl where you want the fringe to be perfectly even this is sort of meant to be a little bit more rugged and a little bit more um, organic so yeah I'm kind of torn I, I part of me wants to take it down and just pull the rotary cutter apart and part of me just wants to leave it I have trimmed some of the ones off that are super long um, oh that's a good point Chris she just said it balances the imperfections that's a that's a great point actually um, and Mary likes it too she says it let it be free-flowing um, oh, bye, Mary. She's tootling off. Um, yeah, I think I think I agree with you guys. Like Becca says, it's organic looking for sure and totally works. I kind of agree with you. I I had sort of been torn, but I wanted to ask you guys because I knew you would you would give me the your your thoughts. Um, so I'm just looking in the chat channel. Sorry, guys. There's a little bit of a pause here. Um, yeah, some are definitely whiter. It, you can see once you start to really study it that there is some that are more white than others. Um, so it looks it looks great and rustic. Thanks, Tessa. So that's sort of my pot blanket. I mean, it, it's, it was a big project. It took 16 months in total. I went through big periods where I didn't work on it at all. So it's not like I worked on it solid for, for 16 months, but it definitely was in the back of my mind and in its bag for 16 months. And I'm definitely really, really ready for it to be done and off and hanging and I will not make anything like this again for a very very long time I would really like to do a weaving that we could hang up above our bed but I'm not sure I'm ready to tackle that anytime soon after how much energy and effort went into this so I really appreciate all of your kind comments thank you so much after the couple of weeks that we've had it's nice to have something bright to look at and uh, I really appreciate the kindness from you guys and from the community from the community so thank you so much for joining me today um, I think that's it for the show for this week. Next time I will talk about my escarpment cowl. I do actually have some spinning that I've been doing and I'll talk about that next show. Um, on May 1st we've got um, a really exciting interview to be released. I chatted with Heidi of Vegan Yarns because we're sort of doing our plant-based um, overarching theme right now with the Patreon stuff. So there's some flax stuff coming to you and um, I'm really excited about that. And for those of you who subscribe to the Thoughtful Spinner there's a very very exciting thing going to show up in your uh, inbox on May 1st so I'm very excited about that so I hope that you all have a wonderful weekend I hope it's sunny where you are and starting to warm up and um, I, I hope you all are doing really well and until next time happy spinning bye everyone <laughs>